Meanwhile, Ukraine looks to the world today to pledge more funds to help it contain the consequences of history's worst nuclear accident. The EU on Monday committed another 110 million euro for a new sarcophagus that will seal the damaged reactor at least until the end of the century. In Kiev today, the leaders of the G8 and EU are meeting for a conference to mark the 1986 disaster, which has been brought into sharper focus again by the nuclear crisis at Fukushima in Japan. Meanwhile, European Commission is urging European ports to check radiation levels on all ships coming in from Japan to see if they exceed a new limit after the nuclear accident last month. The European Commission wants to exclude any risk and suggested a new EU-wide limit of 0.2 microsieverts per hour above normal level. If that limit is exceeded, the EU advises that these ships should be, quote, washed thoroughly. The first ship that left Japan after the earthquake arrived in Rotterdam last Thursday and more ships are due to arrive in European ports this week. When the Chernobyl nuclear power station exploded 25 years ago, authorities chose to encase the damaged reactor in a massive stone coffin to halt the release of further radiation. It was only intended as a temporary measure. And now the concrete and steel structure known as a sarcophagus is so badly damaged that officials plan to build a new high-tech seal. Today the sarcophagus and everything around it presents a serious danger to public health. In 2007, two French companies, Vinci and Bouygues, were granted the contract to build a new protective shelter. The shelter will have two functions. The first one will be the protection of the plant during dismantling in order to avoid the, the dust, radioactive dust, to escape in the uh, air. And the second function will be uh, to carry a huge crane below the, the arc in order to dismantle the plant. The project, however, has been hit by delays. Work began last year and is expected to be completed in 2015, three years behind the schedule. The shelter will take the form of a giant arch, measuring 108 metres high, 162 metres long and 257 metres wide. There are two layers of metal and composite materials separated by a cushion of air. The new shelter will be built alongside the ruined reactor and will weigh some 23,000 tonnes once complete. However, the problem of waste disposal is yet to be solved. French firm Arriva had started on a project to build safe storage facilities, but it pulled out in 2007. Just over a week ago, smoke was still rising from the wreckage of Unit 3 at Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant, crippled since a massive earthquake and tsunami struck March 11th. The pictures supplied by the operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, were taken from an unmanned helicopter. Now TEPCO has been probing the damaged building from the ground. It released pictures showing a robot exploring. This sequence shows the so-called packbot, which looks like a drafting table lamp on treads, opening a door inside the reactor housing. The company says the radiation readings the robots have taken indicate the environment inside the building and the others that were explored Sunday remains too harsh for human workers to enter. TEPCO claims that won't alter its plans for stabilizing the stricken complex by the end of the year. Still in Parliament Monday, angry lawmakers frustrated over the slow response to the crisis were grilling officials, including TEPCO's president, who appeared visibly ill at ease. Masataka Shimizu did take the opportunity to say sorry once more. I again deeply apologize for causing so much trouble for residents near the complex. People in Fukushima and the public for the accident at Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant which resulted in releasing the radioactive material. Radioactivity has hampered efforts to retrieve bodies around the plant. Around a thousand of them are thought to be buried in and around the debris left by the tsunami. The Defense Ministry announced 2,500 soldiers would be joining police in the grim search.
Hey YouTube, Freedom for Kaz here. Hey guys, girls, friends, subscribers, family members, good friends. You know, there's been a lot of talk about the Fukushima plants, what's going on in Japan, the earthquakes, tsunami. The radiation, several types of radiation, and there's been some videos made on YouTube as far as what the radiation means. Now, as I'm making this video, I'm in the middle of a thunderstorm. I don't know if you saw the lights flicker just for a split second there or not, but they did. Got some nice hot tea here. I just want to make this video today because we all need to be aware of the radiation. Now some YouTubers are saying the radiation isn't that critical, while other YouTubers like myself are saying that it is. Whether or not the radiation is leaking in large amounts or little amounts at Fukushima is irrelevant. The main point is that the radiation is leaking. That's the point. The difference between whether a lot of radiation is leaking or a little radiation is leaking does have some factors on what's going to happen and how fast. But the bottom line is just that. The radiation is leaking. If you don't understand what happened in Chernobyl I suggest that you research it. I remember back in 86, I was 19 years old. And I, rem I remember a couple years after seeing some of the documentaries of the ill-fated children and the illnesses that they had and the birth deformities that they had. It was not pretty by any means. And yet some of us here in America are just not paying attention. Some of us are saying, why do I need to worry? I can't change it anyway. I agree. Here's my point. And I'm going to end the video on this. As humans, we have the instinct to not lay down and die. The reason why you say, why should I worry about it, is for two reasons. Reason number one, you have water in your sink. And reason number two, you have food on your table. Okay. When the water well dries up and the food disappears, you're not going to go bury your head in the sand and say, this is what I chose to do. I didn't want to worry about it then. And I'm certainly not going to worry about it now that I don't have water and now that I don't have food. Because human instinct drives us to survive. And you may say, now, what can I do about it? And you won't prepare. But when the sink runs dry and the food runs out, you are going to seek out those who have prepared. So this is one of my videos where I'm going to say, you might want to rethink that strategy. You might want to rethink about prepping and getting ready because if you think that you're just gonna bust through the woods 
and take somebody else's belongings, you've got another thing coming. Let's enjoy it while we can. Peace to all my brothers and sisters.